This is the ancient gateway of China. Centuries ago, wooden ships have carried Chinese goods from here to the rest of the world. Today, the sails are gone, replaced by wheels. And now they're exporting innovation with next-gen vehicles. Just so you know, electric cars in China aren't just on the road. I'll show you why. Pick your ride. So how did China take over the world of electric vehicles? In today's video, let's break it down. Guangdong, the industrial heartland of China, is home to some of the world's leading EV brands. Here, the streets are ruled by green license plates. Billions of new energy vehicles are made here every year. But how did they manage to make so many and make them this good? We're now at the coastal city of Shanwei and we're about to step inside one of BYD's massive production sites. This is the EV empire that makes even Elon Musk jealous. BYD sold over 2 million cars globally in just the first half this year, way more than Tesla. And now we've been given rare access to peek behind the curtain. I mean, look at this. This is massive. They're producing about 800 vehicles per day inside this factory. It takes less than a minute to put all the parts together. In just a five minute drive from the factory, the cars are loaded onto BYD's massive cargo ships. In a matter of weeks, they'll be sitting in European dealerships selling for tens of thousands of euros each. Last year, 17 million electric vehicles are sold globally. Over 60% of them came from Chinese EV brands. I wasn't the only one blown away by the scale and speed. My friends Ben and Rianne were also on the tour. A little bit like, it's a lot to take in. It's a very, obviously a very impressive EV factory. They are a British couple and YouTubers. Their videos on Chinese EV factories have gone viral online. Just the robotics. I know there's humans doing the little, the little bits, the fiddly oh. bits, but the robots are giving them jobs that are 90% done. They're just finishing it off. For me, that impre it impresses me that it's fast, it's constant, like this, it's always, the production line's always moving. Manufacturing muscle may lay the foundation of the EV kingdom, but China didn't become the leader just by playing safe. It's pushing into the unknown. Xpeng is a name that EV insiders are watching closely because their cars don't just drive, they fly. Okay, Alex, tell me something about this car. Yeah, for sure. This is the X3. Uh, this is the aircraft component that comes out of our land aircraft carrier. We plan to use this mostly for like personal tourism. Um, so if you went somewhere with the, the car, mm -hmm. you can take this out and fly 15 minutes uh, somewhere and come back in 15 minutes. It looks like something out of a sci-fi movie, but they say it'll hit the market in under a year. This is going to be approximately within 2 million RMB. Ah, so how many orders do you guys have now? We got about uh, 4,000 pre-orders as of right now. And when can they finally get it? About Q1 in 2026, so the start of 2026 estimated. Well, great, of course, but I'm curious about one thing. How is your English so good? Oh, uh, I'm Canadian actually, so I was born in China, but I grew up in Canada my whole life. Wow, so you're Canadian? Yeah. Then what brings you back here? Honestly, man, the high tech here in China. Alex said he grew up in a white community that rarely heard news from China. And what little they heard often came with stereotypes about Chinese products. But that perception is changing, just like Alex's career path. But at least in North America, uh, you know, we don't really have any Chinese EV companies as of right yeah. now in 2025. It's mostly the market is dominated by Tesla. Tesla. Yeah, uh, so I mean, I really think that there's a huge potential for Chinese companies there. Can you imagine 
soaring 300 feet in the air in that thing with zero protection. I think it's this kind of fearless innovation that is driving this country's industry forward. How did the former kingdom of bicycles get here? To really understand how far things have come, I sat down with someone who's been following the story up close. Hey, hey Alex. Hey man. Alex just did a 10-part documentary detailing China's electric revolution. He's perhaps the most knowledgeable YouTuber when it comes to Chinese EVs. Uh, there's quite a negative sentiment that was been put on them since day number one, saying, you know, China is embarking on something that they don't have any skill with. But when we look at China's best countries that are working together in collaboration, like the Huawei's, like the CATLs, like the cherry industry that works to keep these vehicles within uh, regulation with the BYDs and so on and so forth. When you have collaborations that work together like China does, uh, you can then start breaking you know, new barriers and new frontiers. One misunderstanding in the West is that China's EV rise is just about state subsidies. Uh, Subsidy-wise, yes, of course, China is not trying to hide the fact. Uh, it's actually trying to embrace the fact that there's a government out there that is taking responsibility. And we have to understand, you know, why is the government involved here? Well, it's very fair to say that they're looking at, you know, ways forward. If you're going to bring in a new energy vehicle into the market, you want uniformity that these cars will use maybe the same charger. The government does more than just hand out subsidies. They plan, guide and align with automakers, battery firms and even power grid companies. If you're going to implement car companies, new energy vehicle, enjoy the you know, benefits from that. Clean air, beautiful clean environment, uh, savings to your citizens. It's a you know, win-win if a country does decide to help its citizens out. But once again, it's that age-old problem, profit over people's actual prosperity. And that's unfortunately where some of these countries only look for. They only look for profit. They lack with this understanding that it can bring prosperity with investment. The road ahead might not always be smooth, but China is clearly writing the rules of the EV game. Yet, is that the whole story? Behind the booming EV revolution lies a bigger question. Where does all that power come from? To keep millions of EVs on the road, China needs an energy supply that's not just massive, but clean, stable and future ready. In our next episode, we'll uncover the energy engine driving it all and the secrets behind it.